Hello, my friends. It's your buddy Keith. I'm here at Essex Recording Studios. We're in the kitchen, and I've got a pretty rare bass to show you from one of my favorite artists from one of my all-time favorite bands. This is a John Campbell signature bass. Uh, they don't make them anymore. They made them for a very limited time. Only out of the Japanese factory. You can see a signature there on the truss rod cover. This is new old stock left over from a dealer here in the UK who went out of business. Uh, I got this off of him. It was the only piece I was interested in in what, his remaining stock. And it's just sat in this case for like a year. And now I'm going to put it up for sale. Before I do that though, I wanna show you guys just how cool this thing is in person. Got a nice rosewood fretboard with JC initials in the traditional Jackson font, which is pretty cool. Dot inlays. Got the serial number stamped at the bottom of the fretboard, as is common with all high-end Japanese Jacksons. Badass Bass 3. It's a Leo Kwan bridge. I heard that uh, he's not making bridges anymore. I don't know if he got bought out by someone. I think the website was down. He, he might have been out of the game for a couple years now. But if you guys know the story on that... I've only seen the base bridges. I got a Gibson Kirk Hammett Signature Flying V. Bet you didn't know there was a Gibson Signature Kirk Hammett Metallica guitar. But I got that, and that actually had like an early 80s Leo Kwan badass bridge for the Flying V. And they had to uh, laser scan it and hire a company to recreate it. I was reading up about that the other day. But back to this base. You've got the standard um, kind of p bass jazz bass fusion thing going on with the pickups and the full, I guess, EMG, EQ. These pots feel good. And uh, let's go ahead and get this out of, out of its case. Cool. Hope you all are having a good weekend. It's Saturday night here in England. I'm a little bored, to be honest with you. I've just been doing work all day. All right. Tomorrow we're going into London to uh, look at a huge collection of gear from a studio that's gone out of business. And we're looking at a bunch of guitars, too. There's a, a late 70s Music Man, uh, a 78 Les Paul, an old, a couple Rickenbackers, just tons of cool vintage stuff. So hopefully we'll have some more videos tomorrow. Okay, so this finish, it's a satin matte black finish. If you touch it, your fingerprints stay. I don't know if you can see it with the phone. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. But like, it's it's very, um, they don't, they're not permanent or anything. You can rub it off. But if you're familiar with finishes like this, well, that's what this one is. There's no uh, coat of lacquer or polyurethane or anything like that. And it's not a, a nitrocellulose finish either. It's very modern looking. You've got the strap locks here yeah, and there. Very interesting headstock shape too. Very, very small for a, a Jackson headstock. Usually you've got something huge and pointy that you could use to take someone out. I kind of dig the shape of this one. You can see the uh, stickers are still on the back of the tuners. Jackson concert bass tuners there. A really nice maple neck. You've got the Made in Japan sticker. Again, looks brand new because the bass is brand new. Scarf joint there. Rock solid construction. And a bolt on neck. Battery compartment for the 9 volt, which is nice. These, these are really nice with the flip top. Uh, ESP does a really nice one that's kind of like brushed steel, and it's a, it's a, it kind of flips open. You press the side, and then this side pops up. And it's string through for this badass bridge. Whole guitar looks badass. Bass guitar, that is. 
nice big deep curves there and just a kind of a swooping one piece there that's really unique when you think about it. Looks kind of like a big bit big banana. Let's get in focus. There we are. There's the case. You can see the case is brand new too. It's not a uh, a Jackson case, but it is very nice. And we'll flip it her over again. The weight is good. It's got some solid weight to it, to this body, but it's not it's not too heavy. The neck is very thin and feels light. It's maple after all. But the body has like just the right amount of weight to where you get the tone and still going. Still going. And the resonance, you know, that's what you want. String through design with a solid, good weighty piece of wood, good size to it, and you get that nice resonance. I think that covers the bases, guys, pun intended. Ah. I'm not sure what they call this piece. Someone can comment and let me know what this type of construction is and what the purpose is. I guess it's just how they have it set in the, the way they have the bolt pattern on the back. But yeah, that's the John Campbell Lamb of God signature base, guys. I guess the only other parting comments I would say is that a lot of people, some people don't feel comfortable, especially if they're a professional musician, don't like playing other people's signature bases on stage or signature instruments, you know, guitars, whatever, because, you know, you're trying to make a name for yourself. And uh, some people think it's not that cool. I don't know. I guess it just depends on, on what you're using and how you're using it. But the nice thing about this bass is that it is nicer than anything Jackson puts out today outside of their USA factory. It's pretty much just the David Ellefson imports. This is way, way nicer than those but it's also it's pretty understated like you can't really tell especially if you're from you know on a stage that this is a signature bass you could kind of you know no one's going to see the jc through the strings you can't see that signature so just wanting to use this as your own and you could put some stickers on it refinish it do your own custom paint job on it whatever you want to do you still have you know, the tried, true, and tested, battle-tested construction and layout and configuration of a platinum-selling artist. But, uh, you know, you could make this your own. I dig it. I love it. I love having it at the collection here in the studio. And hopefully it finds a good home. I'm excited to see who ends up buying this one. All right, guys, I'm going to go put it back in its case here. I'll show you just the outside of the case. You can see like, it still has a tag on it. Westfield. And we still have the hang tag for this. There you go. It has a serial number product. I guess it's a Japanese hang tag, a little bit different from the... American hang tags, but yep, you can see the serial number all matches on that. Whew, what a long day, guys. You can probably tell just from my voice that I am tired. So I'm gonna check out. I got one or two more videos to do for you. I'm gonna do a Ghost Flames USA Jackson Dinky. Really cool guitar. I'm gonna do that one next. And other than that, I'm gonna get some sleep. I will see you all bright and early for Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Before I go, please subscribe to the channel. We're doing phenomenally well, team. We're over 210 subscribers today. Really appreciate all the help. It's awesome. And Facebook is doing great too. We're just at about 1,200 likes. So if you can go to Essex Recording Studios, give us a big fat like. And now we're on Google. Just found out we weren't on Google Maps. So we're on Google Maps and we have two entire reviews. So if you've been here or bought a guitar from us, 
want to record with us, give us a nice five-star fat review over there on Google. Appreciate it, guys. We'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.